Bien. Buenos días, buenas tardes, según el lugar en el que se encuentre. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. We'd like to invite you to um, join the main room. Please remember to choose the language you wish to listen to by clicking on the globe. Participants to join our main um, room, if you would like to, for example, at the end in the Q and A uh, section, uh, ask questions live. So we are uh, promoting you to panelists. Please choose the interpretation language that is of your preference. Good. Bien. Bueno. Voy a escoger español para seguir mis propias instrucciones. <laughs> Perfecto. Bien. Muy bien. Muchas gracias nuevamente por estar Thank aquí. Thank you again for being here. Thank you to AWS, Amazon Web Services, for helping us conduct this joint webinar with the IAI and with the participation of Samantha Nelson and Christian Castellanos. Very briefly, we'd like to share with you that we have invited the researchers from the region that can use these credits that Samantha will be talking about later on um, in order to use the, the AWS cloud services mainly regard, uh, regarding research, health research that have to do with health services and also with healthcare systems that focus on uh, equality and inclusive health systems. Besides this, we'd like to know, we'd like to find out about the possibilities that the cloud provides us with that we don't know about yet. The idea is, you know, handle data with equity and inclusion and the equity and inclusion approach. And maybe our current tools do not allow us to do that. Today, uh, let us now begin with Samantha Nielsen from the AWS Health Equity Initiative. Samantha manages public global public health services and WAS, and she focuses on social impact. She has a master's degree in public health through an Eastern Virginia Medical School joint program and the Old Union University. And she has 15 years of experience in creating and improving international development programs that have a high impact. She is an expert in tropical diseases, community uh, health, and uh, global emergencies. Samantha, you have the floor. And please remember, if you're not in the main room, please uh, select the interpretation language you uh, would like to listen to. Thank you. Go ahead, Samantha. Thank you, Irene. Um, hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here today uh, to speak through what the AWS Health Equity Initiative is. I'm going to begin the presentation and then uh, later on, I'm gonna hand it over to Christian, um, who also works for AWS, but he is actually in the Latin American region and he'll speak about um, how to actually build uh, on our platform and some examples um, of what we have delivered in your space. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, the AWS Health uh, Equity Initiative was born out of COVID-19, actually. Um, it, it was a three-year commitment, uh, up to $40 million, to help customers develop culturally responsive solutions and to advance health equity for underserved and underrepresented communities. The communities that we serve through this program is quite broad. Uh, it can be race, it can be ethnicity, indigenous groups where you are, gender, disability, neurodiversity, geography, you name it. Uh, all of those different categories are represented uh, through our program. The main focus is to drive equity in health solutions um, in all of these different communities. We just completed year one and we were able to grant out 
uh, $14 million uh, to 90 customers um, or recipients worldwide. So people were represented from any and every region that you can think about uh, through our first year. And we're excited uh, to continue this process for the next two years for the program. Something to note is that uh, the AWS Health Equity Initiative, it is not a cash program. It's a credit program onto the AWS cloud. So it gives you money that cannot be turned into actual operating dollars, but it allows you to build what you need uh, on our platform. Um, and also for all nonprofit uh, recipients, as well as researchers, they are able to select ProServe services uh, and ProServe really helps you to build the solution. Sometimes people do not have technical expertise in-house. And so this option also helps. Um, it, it allows AWS internal staff to help build out the solution that you need, uh, that you want to deploy. Next slide, please. The program categories uh, currently for the health equity initiative is increase access to health services, reduce disparities by addressing social determinants of health. And social determinants of health is anything that might hinder your opti optimal health. So you think about, uh, I know some people are interested in climate change, right? So you think about th that can be food insecurity, nutrition, it can be um, access to even education, housing, all of those are barriers to have overall wellness in your space. Um, leverage the data to promote equitable and inclusive systems of care. What I understand from uh, this webinar today, we have several researchers potentially on the line, and this might be an area that you're very interested in. Um, many of our researchers and um, university institutions operate um, under this category, always looking at large data sets, um, how to, allow access to large data sets for the end users um, and different platforms to, to access data. Um, and the last category that you can apply for is advancing equity in diagnostics and screening. The diagnosis category is very interesting. People have developed all types of um, solutions that you might be working with the general public. For example, we have a recipient that you can cough into your phone and their platform is diagnosing coughs, for example. So that's what goes under uh, diagnostics. Next slide, please. So this slide talks about our program eligibility. Um, Anyone that is listed in the first bullet is able to apply. So accredited research institutions, research consortiums, nonprofits, private entities, um, you can be a current AWS customer or you've never built anything on any tech platform and you wanna be a first time customer, we welcome you. Uh, pretty much for eligibility, you cannot be a standalone entity. You must be part of an institution, a startup or a company. The program is global, hence why we're presenting today into your region. Um, so anyone can apply from anywhere in the world. We really wanna scale um, our footprint and we think good solutions come from anywhere. Uh, usually during our process, people sign a credit agreement. Um, and part of that is just our terms and references to work on the cloud. Um, and you submit progress reports and you can, you know, refer to AWS and Amazon publicly uh, for referenceability. Um, additionally, Amazon, if you're not familiar, has a partner network, which we can provide follow-up information after this call to Irina to disperse um, between everyone. But our partner network is actually um, certified partners that can build solutions as well. Uh, usually, if you're using them, you do have to pay their operations costs, but then they would use the credits that you would receive through this program uh, to deploy your to build and deploy your solution. Um, through our program, anyone can apply for up to two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars in AWS credits per year, and we welcome applications from year to year. So, for example, potentially you applied in year one, your credits were about to end you are more than welcome to apply for year two as well for the maximum request or whatever is needed. 
Since this is not a cash-based program, we do ask that people, there's a calculator, which is part of our application process. We do ask that people only request what they need um, because any credits that are not used, they disappear. Um, and then sometimes we have excep exceptions case by case. Maybe your application falls outside of the our boundary lines, our eligibility criteria. We sometimes go back and review um, additionally. And lastly, private sector applicants. So if any of you are startups um, or just work for a private sector company, we do request that you must match um, at least 25% of your total request. So for example, if you are asking for $100,000 in AWS credits, um, we ask that you can demonstrate $25,000 um, in match funding, which could just be, you know, you could just say that you are doing some of that by LOE, like level of effort of some of your current staff, um, or you can say we have in kind of 25,000 coming in and services from another opportunity but we do ask for a match request only for private sector applicants. Next slide, please. So this slide really just maps out our application process. Sometimes people say it's too good to be true, it's too straightforward. Um, I think people will assume because we're with AWS and Amazon, everything needs to be super complicated. And it's not necessarily. Our next deadline is actually March 31st. Um, and that you would have, to, you can apply now, you can apply on March 30th, you can apply in the morning of March 31st um, if you're interested in the next cycle. But once we receive your application, we hold them until that the current cycle closes. Then we begin a review period. We have an internal review committee that is made up of, of um, several people from across Amazon, both the consumer side, which everyone is familiar with, amazon.com, and on the web services side. Everyone has an interest um, in health and health equity in some space and some type of expertise. So once your application is submitted, uh, applications are then dispersed to our review committee, um, and then they approve. We have a scoring process for every single application received. It's either red that you won't be funded in that current application cycle, yellow where we will email you back with a list of several questions, um, or green. You, you send us a perfect application and we are moving forward. Green is where you want your application to go because it, it has the fastest review time. Um, we then go through a financial review. I referenced a calculator very briefly, which is part of the application link. Uh, we have an AWS calculator and it's not a regular calculator. It maps out the services that you're asking for. What is the correct pricing structure for that service for a year or whatever time frame that you're interested in? Our programmatic time frame is one year or 12 months. Um, so your pricing would be in line with that. The, so once the finance review is completed, um, we digitally send out a credit agreement, which is what I mentioned before that says, you know, you abide by the rules of the program, which there are very little rules, um, and then you're ready to deploy. Once the credit agreement is signed and we match up with our finance team, we then send you an award email and the award email usually contains a press kit. So that's another benefit of this program, right? You get to leverage the AWS brand for the work that you're doing globally, which people love. You know, everyone can recognize uh, the Amazon logo everywhere. Um, so that's a big plus. So we provide a press kit as to how to use our logo correctly. Um, and then also a reporting template. We do ask that people uh, report biannually, so midterm at the, at the end of the year. We'd love to see how your project is going. Um, and then your project begins. And it's for 12 months, not from when you've applied, but 12 months from um, when your credit, when you receive your uh, credit award email. Um, one thing to note is that, um, oh, I just completely went blank. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway, it'll come back to me. We can go to the next slide. Sorry. Okay. 
Up here, actually, this slide uh, just demonstrates a few of our the HEI credits over the last um, 18 months uh, that have been focused um, within research. There's the first one is Rush University, which is Systems for Health, and they're using uh, data research to decrease the life expectancy gap. This is in Chicago in the US, um, and they're doing this through artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, and I should say, if I had to pick one of the largest uh, services used on the cloud by our recipients, it definitely has been artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, that and data storage um, are the two biggest services that we often see our recipients uh, using. Um, the Eco Health Alliance is another example in the research space, and they've been collecting data of animal pathogens um, with human crossover potential. So as we're talking about climate change, I think several of you are, are focusing on the intersection of climate change and health. Zoonotic illnesses is a huge, huge, huge issue, right? We're seeing it more and more and more. Uh, the West Africa Ebola epidemic that was a situation. We can argue COVID-19 with uh, case zero. That was a situation. So EcoHealth Alliance is studying that space and using the AWS platform uh, to collect their data. Um, we also have databases where people are working with biobanks globally in Mexico and the UK, genomic sequencing for COVID-19, research on genetic uh, variants. And another example that's not necessarily um, research link, but more focused on, um, I could say on population health is Grupo ICE. Um, they created a Costa Rican vaccine uh, platform. So the problem in Costa Rica during COVID-19 was that, and it's not just COVID-19, it's many other illnesses, but their solution was born out of COVID-19 is that um, people in the rural areas of the country were one, not getting vaccinated, um, and two, their health information was not part of the national government system. Uh, so Grupo ICE developed a platform that they could collect the vaccine information all the way, like last mile um, across these rural provinces and then have it feed into uh, the government national system um, so that there are less gaps within this, less gaps within their health reporting. Um, although they use this mostly for COVID-19 again and the vaccine process there, I think they're also exploring other um, vaccines that are routine for the country. Something else I wanted to note that I forgot on the last slide is that many people may have an idea and they come to us and they apply um, and they can articulate their, their idea perfectly well. They receive the credits um, and then they, they implement for that 12 months. And sometimes the idea fails and that's okay. You don't have to have this perfect solution in place that you're deploying. The credits are to be used to figure out what is the next best thing, what is realistic. Sometimes what is realistic is not feasible within that time frame or within the subject area that you're trying to work in. And that's okay too. Um, and I, I welcome everyone to apply. Don't be limited with, I have an idea, but I'm not sure how this could marry with technology. I don't know if it's gonna be successful. Try, you never know. The credits are used for that. You're not graded on your credits once you receive them. It's, did you use the credits? Did you use the service? Did you have success in your own eyes? Yes, no? Great, share with us what you learned from this project. Next slide, please. Over to Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Muchas gracias, Cristian. Te voy a presentar primero. Claro. Thank you so much. Okay, let's introduce Cristian. Thank you so much, Samantha. That was great. Okay, we have Cristian Castellanos. He's an uh, Amazon Web Services Solution Architect. He works in health for the Andean region, Central America, and the Caribbean. He has a PhD in engineering awarded by the University of Los Andes, and he has 18 years of experience in, in government and education. Chris, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Irene, for, you know, talking about the, the program. As Irene has said, 
And I would also like to thank the IAI for the invitation. I am Christian Castellanos, and I work with clients in health and life sciences. I help them understand their business needs so that they can create specific solutions within AWS by including some of the services that we're going to uh, go over today. First of all, I would like to talk about the these four pillars that allow me to describe describe this vision uh, first of all to provide the security compliance and data privacy in the understanding that in research and health we have sensitive data that belong to patients or people that participate in studies and um, this allows us to build these solu these solutions by protecting these personal data Pillar number two, accelerating innovation. We have a broad and deep portfolio of cloud-based services that help us improve research projects or health-related projects. These allow our users to build their solutions um, when it comes to you know, purchasing new equipment or infrastructure, and then they uh, install specific software for these developments, etc. And they start using uh, uh, ready to implement services. And these services can already be included in the workflow when it comes to genomics or visual recognition, etc. This is done so that you know value is created for final users. Pillar number three: unlocking the value of data. And the idea is to provide, uh, so, uh, to build solutions that help with clinical processes, research, treatment, health prevention, etc. The idea is to do this uh, smoothly and also work with AI and machine learning. Uh, and this is very popular in the sector. Uh, pillar number four powering the transition to personalized health. The idea is to empower our, our clients to do this. And this is based on data and AI data. The idea is to have a 360 view of patients so that we can provide specific treatments that are aligned with the patient's um, needs. Let us now have a look at the health ecosystem. The uh, sorry, patients are at the at the at the core of this view, and this is a 360 view of patients. So, uh, top uh, left vendors. So we sell services to vendors or specific solution providers within health. We call this ISV. These are independent software vendors. They provide medical devices, um, uh, software to aid in diagnostic decision making. Also health sectors. So this includes hospitals, uh, clinics, laboratories, genomics as well with research centers or clinical research projects. We help uh, governments, for instance, uh, that are in charge of surveillance within each country health ministries, uh, also general public health, uh, government institutions. We also have the payers. Uh, you know, these are the ones that uh, ensure people in each area or country. We also have NGOs and NPOs. They also, for, for instance, apply health standards or also, and also health uh, research organizations. Finally, pharma and med uh, device manufacturers, they also play a major role with, within this ecosystem. Uh, AWS for Health. Here we will find a number of services, business partners, and ready to use services. Um, for different areas, as we call this in our health program. AWS for Health includes uh, people uh, with technical expertise, as is my case, and also we have included specialists in this area. For instance, pharmacologists, uh, pharmacologists, nurses, uh, 
um, head uh, physicians, you know, we have a large number of health professionals that provide their knowledge to, w, uh, to AWS. And this allows us to develop these services in order to effectively address the challenges, uh, the health challenges we face. Within these areas, we have clinic, first of all, clinical systems. This has to do with hospital systems, uh, medical imaging systems. These allow hospitals and providers to add value in this pillar. Of, we also have analytics and machine learning and AI. Number three, how we can improve uh, patient and physician experience. For instance, through a unified portal to uh, work with, uh, you know, uh, scheduling appointments or checking test results. Number four, medical research. We'd like to share with you some success stories in Latin America for this uh, solution area. Also finance and operations and blockchain, because the idea is to also work with transparency and traceability when it comes to clinical studies or when we have different interactions between health providers and insurers to make sure that everything is transparent in this regard and it is technology supported. Finally, core health IT. The idea is to support these cross-cutting processes within organizations, things like email, um, corporate portals, help desks, etc. Well, now I'd like to describe some success stories. I won't be able to address all of them, but some of them I think might be very interesting to you. Uh, for instance, globally, we have Moderna. AWS provided computing resources to accelerate the innovation development of vaccines like the COVID-19 uh, vaccine during the pandemic. Another interesting topic, uh, University of California, Santa Cruz headquarters, Genomics Institute. They process 20,000 cancer samples in days instead of months, uh, which was the case in the past. This means that they saved hundreds of thousands of dollars as they had the uh, resources they needed according to the demands. And this is one of the advantages of the cloud. We don't need to buy large server farms to process uh, data. We can use uh, the resources when we need them, and then we don't anymore when we are done. And of course, the, the, there are pricing optimizations in this regard. Another interesting case, uh, Italian hospital in Buenos Aires, Argentina. We had AWS machine learning services to uh, uh, have more accurate diagnosis of patients, uh, for instance, by analyzing breast cancer, medical imaging, but also skin cancer, and we supported the diagnosis. The final case I would like to mention, uh, this is Grupo INIT. They are based in Mexico, but they're also present in Colombia and other Latin American countries. We developed an advanced patient telemetry and sensors in order to uh, have read oxygen levels or vital signs and in order to you know follow up on patients more effectively both uh, when they were in hospital and when they were discharged um, this is just by way of showing you what is possible in some of our live services this is a service called Amazon Recognition. This allows us to uh, visually analyze video photographs to identify what we can see on the screen, for instance. This is a pre-trained model. So here, the system can identify if someone is wearing a face cover or not. And this was very widely used during the pandemic. Also, when they are wearing some sort of medical um, garment, uh, in this case, it was hand covers. This is what they needed. And what is interesting that uh, this can be done without writing uh, 
code line, you know, the system is pre-trained, you need to send information, pictures, and then the service automatically, you know, detects uh, what you're trying to identify. This is the second demo. I'd like to show you some of our services, for instance, Amazon Textract from an, an image, for instance, a hematic chart. We can read information from a picture and then extract it in a table format. This accelerate, accelerates the whole transcription uh, process. This is done automatically through uh, OCR. Have a look at the precision level. It's really good uh, when it comes to detecting average values. The second service I'd like to show you is Amazon Comprehend Medical. This allows us to analyze natural language in order to extract uh, concepts uh, from uh, medical systems, as in ICD-10 in Spanish, for instance, to find information about medical conditions, medical procedures, med uh, medication, dosing, etc. And the model is trained as well. Have a look at this. We have a description. This is something a physician would write. We can analyze the text with Comprehend Medical, and we can find or detect patient information age, profession, uh, medical procedures performed, and dates. Also, vital signs, uh, medication, and dosage. This is done automatically uh, with ICD-10 or ARIS norm where they get this coding uh, by analyzing natural language. The final example I'd like to share with you is Amazon Health Lake. It is an AWS uh, service that aims to promote interoperability between uh, the different uh, stakeholders within the health system, insurers, providers, the government, in order to facilitate the exchange of information uh, aligned with HL7 FIRE as an international standard. This allows me to share information about uh, appointments with patients, patient information as well. Once again, aligned with the FHIR standard. Have a look at the screen. I can see here that I can check patient Estamos muy atentos. Me pueden pedir igual si quieren eh, hablar desde la otra sala, les puedo. Or maybe if you need to speak from the other room, I can open up the mic in the participants room. Someone has raised their hand, Juan Emilio Hernández. Please go ahead. Let's see how I can allow you to speak. There you are with the mic on, Juan Emilio. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. Greetings from Guatemala. I am Juan Emilio Hernandez. Congratulations on the initiative. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, it's great to participate in this webinar. Um, it's great to see how technology can actually build syn uh, synergies with research projects. Congratulations. Uh, Christian, I think it's, this is a great step from the private sphere towards health and public health. Um, I have a very specific question. Christian, I find this excellent. I work at the University of San Carlos, Guatemala's med uh, medical school. I am a professor at the last, in the last year of the course. I teach uh, EPS Rural, uh, which is very well known in Latin America, something to do with the rural areas. And regarding health inequity and SDGs and the 2030 agenda, and you know, improving quality conditions, it is clear that our health services in Guatemala, you know, public health services, still uh, lack the necessary sanitation, water, and hygiene conditions. And also when it comes to promoting hygiene to prevent disease. Or it is true that the government should have a report according to international standards. They should prepare a report every two years. But now it's been quite a lot of years and the report hasn't been written. Some studies have been conducted in the country and as a university and a medical school, we do have information about 204 services because our students go there for their internship. So the question is, if we were to, uh, to apply for this, how would our topic fit in with what you're doing? You know, this technological side, maybe students from the health services, maybe can, you know, assess the health conditions or hygiene conditions, upload them into a, a platform, analyze, and maybe, I don't know, in six months, we can have an updated country report or something like that, okay? At least in health services where we have a student. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emilio, very interesting. Um, we have done this with several clients or countries regarding data analytics and how to, you know, improve reporting, uh, uh, especially when it comes to hygiene or quality service. There are many things that can be done. First of all, uh, data collection. We've done this. We've done this with many clients, for instance, developing um, in Colombia, developing applications with a, a vaccination record during the pandemic, and then the data are easily collected and processed on a data lake and uh, uh, checked with a dashboard like QuickSight in order to clearly see or show what's going on. And this allows us to follow up on the KPIs in order to make uh, important decisions. That can be done, for instance. Um, and, the, and then depending on how the information is collected, we can also see if one of our AI services, as the one I've just shown you, uh, may maybe use images to um, identify, uh, uh, to detect if the place has been um, is hygienic or not without the need to have a human entering the information, right? A, a test was conducted in Mexico and in the hospitals, they wanted to uh, determine uh, what happened with the uh, surgeons, if they were washing their hands correctly or not, according to the WHO, etc. With our artificial intelligence services, by using security cameras, we were able to um, determine if the hands were being washed correctly or not. And of course, we trained the model. And after this, we, you know, we were able to see if this was uh, being done properly. This is just by way of example. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, of course. And thank you for your time. Um, I'm so, uh, you know, motivated 
um, let's see if we can, you know, coordinate our work to to continue working. And thank you, greetings. Thank you, Christian. I have visited your beautiful country a few times. And of course, Emilio, of course, we can, you know, talk to each other. We can uh, uh, further talk about the details and we can make progress in this regard, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Um, let's see any other questions regarding um, how to apply or what type of project is being, uh, let's say, is successful or maybe Christian has mentioned a few, but maybe you can talk about the specific projects you're working with uh, currently. Generalmente son muy activos. Estoy un poco sorprendida que no tenga muchas I'm a bit surprised. We usually get many questions, um, but maybe the topic is, is, is kind of new and there are not so many questions. Can I, can I add a comment? Adelante, Samantha. Sí, ya tenemos, eh, una yes, pregunta. please go ahead, Samantha. And after that, we already have two questions. Sam, tenemos okay. ya dos preguntas. Go ahead, adelante. Sam. Go ahead. Okay, I know that the, the subject may be new for many of you. So maybe after the presentation or even while other people are asking questions, I always tell people to think big in these scenarios, right? Start with what is the real life problem you're trying to solve, your company is trying to solve, your research is trying to solve, and then go backwards from that. If you didn't have any strings attached, what would you want to change? What would make the most sense um, in the space that you're in? Um, and that way, you're not just stuck saying, okay, this is technology. They only can change handwriting into a digital platform. No, you can start with the big idea what would you do to solve it and then work backwards from maybe some some of the examples we've served uh we've shared and we'll also provide um links to irene that can be shared after where you can go online and see a little bit more of um the aws services because there's there's just so many there's so many uh that can be used so just wanted to put that out there Muchísimas gracias. Tenemos una pregunta de Rosario Quintero de Panamá. Uh, we, thank you, Samantha. We have a question from Rosario Quintero in Panama. Uh, in Panama, we work with, uh, every, with increasing dengue figures. How can our country work with your cloud in order to adapt these figures in a more interactive and accessible way? Maybe Cristian or Samantha, who would like to go? I can answer from a technical perspective, and maybe Sam uh, can help me regarding um, the fact that, that to check if this project might apply to the equity system. So technically speaking, regarding development and project development and implementation, uh, there are different things to consider. First of all, interoperability, and that also has to do with what happened during the pandemic, how we collect information from several uh, patient centers. And there we have, for instance, Amazon Health Lake in order to make these reports interoperable. So we don't need a human entering information about dengue figures, um, but rather automatically by entering the dengue event in the same hospital or clinic, this can be done automatically in order to collect more accurate information and also in real time and with less um, and lowering the risk of error. Regarding data processing, we have an analytics uh, service that allow me to uh, I, I don't need to even install any software. I can set up the hardware or the, or the infrastructure in a smoother way. So I can use these analytics services to identify patterns or to clean data to improve data quality. And we can include this, analyze it and show it on the dashboard as I have just, as I have just told to Emilio. Finally, regarding dengue, I'm not a genomics expert. 
and I know that several of the participants are interested in that. AWS does have services. Uh, there was a rainbow this event where they launched these products. This is this uh, took place between November and beginning of December. We launched a service called Amazon o Omics. The idea is to accelerate anything, everything that is related with genomics, storage, analysis, etc., without having to, you know, install new hardware. The idea is to help clients access these technologies and to accelerate data processing. Thank you. Maybe Sam would like to add something else. Yes, I think Dengue fits uh, the health equity initiative in terms of application for credits. If you were doing the application process, you would just want to be specific to what underrepresented population in your country is being affected, right? With my experience with dengue, it can happen anywhere, but mostly you see it a lot in rural areas. Um, and then also a component to what Chris was talking about is you would want to figure out how to, similar to what I shared about the group in uh, Costa Rica, you, you would want to figure out how to get the data or what hardware you're using to capture the data from uh, the rural areas and having it sent to a central location, whether that's like a nearby you know, hospital or health facility. Um, and then the ultimate, the ultimate goal at the end of the day is what are you using the data for, right? Let's not collect data just to collect data. So collecting that data, are you using it to inform how treatments are done uh, for dengue in the area? Are you using it to inform government policies for, I don't know, still water, mosquito illnesses, et cetera, in country? Something to think about even before you start. We wanna capture data. It needs to be sent to this point quickly, but what are they doing with the data? How is the data changing anybody's life or the, the, the scenario uh, for where they are? So that's just something to, to think about. But absolutely, that idea could go easily into the Health Equity Initiative for funding. Muchísimas gracias, Sam. Eh, Rosario, Thank una you pregunta. so much, Sam. Rosario has asked a question. Yes, I would like to ask something as well. Hi, uh, thank you, Samantha and Christian. As you have said, uh, to many of us, this is uh, completely new. And this is why it's, you know, harder to imagine everything that can be done with this. I work with biosensor development. I am working with dengue, dragons, and leptospirosis, which really affect rural areas, but also in urban areas. And there isn't sufficient knowledge because there isn't a lot of information. Not many tests are conducted, no data are collected. So we are, uh, collecting data to take the information to primary protection centers. And maybe this is what we're missing, how we can collect all this information. So everything that you're telling now, telling us now is very useful. But you know, if we work with chemistry or bio, uh, bio, work with biotechnology, it's very difficult to work with software. So my question is, do you provide uh, help with how to develop applications and how we can, you know, uh, co help connect both areas. Uh, Maria Antonieta, uh, thank you for your question. I'm trying to think about something that Sam mentioned at the beginning. It's uh, the support provided by ProSer. Regarding app development, we also have services that accelerate software building, apps, etc. We also have other services that can be deployed regarding edge IT. So when we are in um, distant areas, there is no connectivity or it's not stable, we can, you know, have this development in order to capture data on a tablet without connectivity, and then 
they can sync with the, uh, the AWS cloud. We can have that type of service. Also, for instance, there are ISPs that develop software and also medical devices or general devices. They also have product proposals where they have, uh, you know, they have these briefcases taken to distant faraway places. They take measurement, patient measurements, etc. And the, these data can be uh, synchronized with the cloud then. Now, how we can support the development of this initiative, we have ProSurf, AWS uh, ProSurf. They focus on helping clients to build their solutions in the understanding that some clients do not have the necessary skills, you know, to do all this, but we can help them build on these skills. We do have se several uh, programs and the ProSurf services are included. Sam, maybe something else you'd like to add? Yeah, I think what we're seeing too is we process our recent applications um, wow. with, pro with professional yeah. services, it's very, very important for um, you to communicate with someone internally at AWS, we'll share an email address as well, um, that you would need professional services early on and indicated on your application. So we provide it and it's available, but it can take time uh, to actually start, you know, to start the process. Like currently I have a meeting in a little bit with with a recipient in um, Bolivia, um, so we need to know in advance. You know a little bit. You can indicate on the application that you will actually need um, this help. We also have seen though with um, applicants that are coming from a lot of the research institutions, at least in the U.S., Canada, and Europe. They often the university or the institution will fund a, a technology uh, person or, or you know someone that can actually build the solution for you, um, and then we just give the credit. So you can ask around internally, and we've also seen um, some groups they will get funding like grant funding for something else, right? Maybe they're researching dengue, right? Um, and they'll actually include personnel um for that research in the grant right and then they'll apply for our credit program and receive the credits so then they already have the person being paid for through their grants and then they'll have their credits to build out the solution on aws so there's many different ways it can go if you don't have the technical capacity within your team or your space but yeah you can always reach out and ask us questions i'll eat will be sharing an email people can uh, communicate with us and ask ahead of time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Gracias, Sam. Tenemos una última pregunta. Thank de... you, Sam. One more question, Yasenia Linares in the Q&A. I think you have uh, replied to this, but maybe you have something to add. I'd like to know if you have services where you integrate climate and environmental information that facilitates the prediction of infectious diseases such as dengue and malaria. Um, I can say something maybe Irene, uh, this maybe has to do with what Emilio has said uh, and what has just been said. We also have a, a data exchange system, I'll write the name in the chat. Basically, these services allow uh, uh, information producers and consumers to have an ecosystem to make the most of that information uh, supply and to integrate it with their own data sources. For instance, I'm not sure what happens with dengue in particular, climate information in particular, but I'm sure that when you enter data exchange, you know, you, you search using keywords and um, probably some government entity or an NPO has uh, historical, uh, historical climate information in a region. Um, um, you probably can include this information in your infrastructure to improve on it and to be uh, able to use our forecasting services based on AI and machine learning in order to find patterns and forecast events and you can do this quickly without having special infrastructure installing special software 
the idea is to you know do analytics and forecast work through our services and that's what i wanted to comment on that maybe sam has something else to say yes thank you christian uh something else to think about it might blow your mind a little bit but um so the team that i sit on is actually global social impact right so today we spoke a lot about health i spoke about health chris spoke about health but we also have aws is huge the company is huge right we have experts in so many different domains something because i know many people have brought up the questions have all been around mosquito-borne illnesses which make a lot of sense uh, for your regions something to think about the other, a sister team to my team is open data. And a lot of what they do, they store data, but several of the people on that team look at satellite imagery from space into the, into the world, right? Some of the satellite imagery can be captured um, and then you can house the data and then use it to inform your programming. The reason I'm saying your programming are your solutions, the reason I'm bringing it up is because when you're looking at, for those of you that are interested in mosquito-borne or viral illnesses um, that are in the same category, something to play around with is maybe, do you have connections with uh, the National Weather Association for your respective country or region? You can use the satellite imagery that they capture or any type of GIS satellite imagery that's mapped to your specific location. This is all technology. This is all on, you could use the cloud for this as well. You start to look at where water is flowing, right? Um, this can be after a weather event with flooding or long rainy season, or this can just be where there's just very large rivers or bodies of water, mangroves, et cetera. And then you can start to link the environments in those areas to different mosquito-borne illnesses, right? So it's taking it a step back before people are even getting dengue or malaria, maybe you're identifying the source of it. And then you can, you're using technology to even identify the source and maybe treat the source before treating the people, right? Um, or figure out different ways to reach out to the, the communities in those areas, just from satellite imagery, storing and processing the data. So that's food for thought, um, especially for those of you that are dealing with, um, public health diseases that are mosquito borne um, or like cholera that comes with a certain event in the country um, and how to inform uh, your national systems and ultimately care for these populations. So something else to think about. Muchísimas gracias, Samantha, Christian. Thank you so much, Samantha and Christian. There are no more questions. And we are now um, uh, at the end of the time we had for this webinar. Once again, if you have questions about this initiative, please have a look at the chat. Uh, there you have the email. Uh, and you need to tell, if you write to them, please tell them you have, been, you have attended this webinar. We have also shared with you other links, the initiative, um, other AWS services, and as Sam has said, you can also use additional services or in your application, you can say that you need additional services. We will be sending the, the link to the recording of this webinar, especially for the your team members that haven't um, joined us today, but who'd like to watch the presentation. Once again, thank you, AWS. Thank you, the IAI, for organizing this session for uh, the, the researchers from the Americas. And thank you to the participants for being here today. Thank you so much. This is the end of the webinar. Thank you, everyone. Gracias a todos. Buen día. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.